Hey everyone, welcome to the March 2023 Grafana Agent Community Call. We have an absolutely packed agenda today. So to go over what we're going to talk about, uh, let me bring it, actually bring it up because I don't remember. We're going to talk about, one, what we're doing to bring Grafana Agent Operator functionality directly into the agent. Two, what we're going to do to make uh, Grafana Agent Flow configs reusable, called modules. And three, what we're doing to make Grafana Agent Flow horizontally scalable. So, uh, without without further ado, I want to hand it off to Craig, who will be talking about the Graf the, the Grafana operator stuff. Hey, uh, my name is Craig. I'm a developer on the agent, and um, I've been working for a while on the operator, um, specifically on um, handling pod monitors, service monitors, and probes in the agent. For anyone not familiar with that, uh, a pod monitor is for Kubernetes. It's a custom resource that you can drop into your cluster that says essentially, I want to scrape pods that match this spec. You know, any pod with a label app equals my app, I want you to scrape it. I want you to forward the metrics. It's a way to kind of self-service, define what you want to do in your cluster. It's very convenient for people. It would have a certain type of organization that that's convenient for. Um, currently, we can consume those with the agent only through the Grafana agent operator. Um, we have an operator which is running in your cluster and you create custom resources for pod monitors, but also for configuring your agent. Um, the problem with this model is it forces people who want to use pod monitors to use the operator to deploy their Grafana agents. And there's some rough edges there. Um, if you want high custom customizability with the agent, that's a little difficult. Um, so what I've been working on is finding a way to decouple that so you can consume pod monitors in the operator just natively. Um, I'm going to try to share my screen. Um, Good luck. So uh, the way we've done that is with a flow component, flow being the new config model for the agent. Um, and here we have just prometheus.operator.podmonitors. It's a component I'm saying... I want to find all pod monitors in my cluster. I want it's to forward great. them. Can you like go ahead. that font size like three times? Um, yes. Holy cow. Perfect, huge, love it. All right, thank you. Okay, um, so I'm saying I want to find all the pod monitors in my cluster. You could filter it to specific pod monitors only. I'm saying I want to forward them to my Grafana Cloud account. Uh, it could be any Prometheus anywhere. Um, and that's all it is. So when I run the agent, it will find all of my pod monitors. It will discover pods that match those. It will scrape them. It will forward them all in one go. Um, so here I'm just running this against my local K3S cluster. Um, I have exactly one pod monitor here for core DNS. Um, it's trying to match pods uh, here that have K8S app as cube DNS. Um, if Oh my, I have exactly one, where is this thing? Um, one pod in my cluster that matches it, uh, 8S app, cube DNS. So I would expect this pod monitor is running in my cluster. I would expect it to find, it's here it found that pod monitor and I expect it to find that pod and scrape it. Um, if we look at the Grafana agent UI, this is a new feature in Flow 2. Mad props to the team that made this. Can you, um, can you make it bigger again, please? Oh, no. OK. Here's Love my it. components exactly from that config I shared. If we look at the operator pod monitors component, we'll say it found my one pod monitor. There's no reconcile error. So it did convert that successfully to a valid scrape config. And it found my one pod. And it's scraping that. Um, and so there's some nice visibility into exactly what it's discovered, exactly what labels it's going to be creating, um, which can be kind of uh, cryptic with these things because there's a lot of relabel rules and stuff. But um, this helps us see it. And if we look at my Grafana Cloud instance, um, this is up Accordion S. I can get like uh, Accordion S build info. It's just a DNS server. Um, oh, come on. 
Please tell me it's up. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know why the graph doesn't have it, but I mean, I have the metrics in my Grafana Cloud instance. So it's working. Um, the advantage this will give us is it's decoupled the deployment of the agent from the dynamic configuration that pod monitors give. So if someone would rather deploy the agent with our new Helm chart, that's really cool, um, but still use pod monitors, they can in the future. Um, so hopefully people frustrated with the operator that only want it for pod monitors and service monitors and things can uh, use this in the future. Uh, any questions about that? Thanks, Craig. I think I think that's super cool. Like one of the things that I think is really interesting about bringing pod monitors into Flow is um, you could hypothetically like use a pod monitor component, convert that to OTLP data, and then send it to like some other company, uh, which is really cool. Like you can't do that with Prometheus operator. You can't do that with the agent today. So I, I'm I'm really excited to see like all these uh, new capabilities with putting uh, operator support directly into Flow. Yeah, I really like that we're handling the metrics directly instead of like all the operator, the Prometheus operator and Grafana agent operator. They find the pod monitors, they then generate a config with all that data in it statically and give it to the agent that's running. Um, so there's kind of this intermediate step of like, okay, let's read the big old blob of config that it generated. Um, whereas with this model, we just scrape it directly. You can see the state of, you know, what pod monitors have you found, what targets have you found. Um, it's a little less indirect for debugging, and hopefully people find that's easier and better. So. Yeah, for sure. What's up, Pascal? Uh, what other CRDs are we going to be uh, implementing in Flow? So the big three are um, pod monitors, service monitors, and probes. Um, those are the, the kind of dynamic monitoring ones from Prometheus Operator. Um, there's also some things like pod logs. Um, there's Prometheus rules. Um, there's a variety of, of Kubernetes custom resources the agent can handle. I think Kubernetes events are one. Um, that's one of the nice things about Flow is we're really not limited as far as what we can do. Um, it's kind of more able to be a, a multi-purpose tool. there's ideas anyone has, we'd love to hear them, entertain them. So would you, would you want to use the operator after like, like would you need the operator still if we had these components? No, I, I prefer to deploy directly with the Helm chart, manage the config myself directly. Um, I feel like that's just a simpler model. Um, so hopefully people would have the choice and we can, help make better informed decisions about when you would want to use the operator and when you wouldn't. Um, the operator managing your um, Grafana agent installations is just a little bit of a foreign concept for, for most people. And it's, it's taken directly from what Prometheus operator does, but it, it does cause confusion. I think if we deploy directly from the Helm chart, most people will have a better time. <laughs> and and flow supports uh, traces, so you know there's that. Oh, I don't want to talk about that. All right, thanks, Greg. Anyone have any questions about uh, all that stuff? If not, we're going to move on. All right, moving on, we're going to go over to Eric to talk about how we're going to reuse Grafana agent flow configs in something called modules. Eric, all yours. All right, excellent. I moved you guys way to the right. And I'm going to present over to the left. Let me know. Robert, once Looks you can good. see. Him. Just blow it up like twice again. <laughs> blow it up bigger. OK. How's that? Once more. Once more. You got it. Good. Perfect. OK. All right. So we're going to talk about modules. So kind of before we get into modules, I just want to show what you know, current state looks like, and then we're going to get into an example eventually with modules showing uh, what it would look like in that format. So today, uh, what we have with Flow is you, you kind of need to stack all of your configuration into a single file. So we've got this single dot river file here, and inside of it, I've got some metrics, I've got some logs, 
and I've got some traces. So what happens is th this is a fairly simple example that we're going to go through of getting some basic metric logs and traces out there. However, if you can imagine uh, for more complex configurations, it'll be a little difficult to manage as it gets bigger, as well as if you have reusable configurations that you want to be able to uh, mix and match, uh, this, this doesn't really support that at all. So in comes modules. So let's take a peek. So so what are modules? So modules are uh, parameterized reusable configurations that can also uh, export variables. So the way we got to where we are now, uh, oh, font size, right? Thank you, Robert. So the way we got to where we are now is we start out with this with this RFC. So I want to kind of just call this out as as something that the the team has gone through and it's been available, you know, public for comment and input and it, you know it's it's quite detailed uh about what we're trying to do and why and to follow that up um here's here's the pull request for it and you can see we've got 67 comments so there's been quite a bit of healthy discussion on it which has been fantastic and uh, i think you know by the time we release this this uh this rfc will will be merged and finalized uh so it'll be part of the the agent repo going forward so that people can uh, look back on uh, the history of this, which is fantastic. Um, one, once we kind of have the, the RFC laid out to where we're comfortable, we, we did a prototyping phase. So I, th I think there was at least three prototypes that were built um, to, to uh, approach this from some different angles within the code base. And I'll kind of show you. So, so this is a very simplified diagram of the before. So kind of like that single uh, river file that I showed, we've got this flow controller, which manages a set of components. So that would all go you know, one configuration file, think of it like that. And it's got some number of components and that scales out that way. Um, where we headed with modules looks more like this. So we've still got that top level flow controller with some number of components, but in here we've got this, uh, what we're calling a module loader. And, and that's a component that starts another flow controller. Um, and then inside of that, we can have that managing different components. And I wanted to show here, we've also, you know, you can have a module flow controller inside, inside of a module flow controller. And that, that'll be an example. So you, you, can, you can keep going. We, we've talked about, you know, putting a limit on how deep you can go, uh, but I don't think we've finalized what that would be or what that would look like yet. Um, okay. Sure, I got all. Okay, so what do we what do we actually have so far? What have we built? What where are we at this moment in time? So, concept doc. So here we've added, and this will be in the next release, a concept doc that talks about modules. Uh, oh, and I gotta blow this up. I'm sure. Maybe like that. And. This also includes down at the bottom, and I'm not going to go through this in detail, but I just want to bring it up for awareness. We've got examples of what a module would look like and how it would be referenced from another uh, river config. So right here. Uh, we've also got documentation on the module string component itself. So it's similar to other Grafana agent components. So it's right in the list, but it starts with a module dot. So that's what we've got over here. And that's at least well documented for now. So that's the documentation side. What does this stuff actually look like in practice? And we're going to do a, a little demo. Um, so we started with this concept of module dot string as the first module loader. Just make sure. Any questions? Okay, good. Um, so this is an example of what it would look like. So here we've got this module string component, and we can see that it's loading content from another local file component. So for module.string, it kind of requires two components to make it work. And you'll see uh, we're, we're prototyping, and I'm going to demo what a module.file would look like so we don't need multiple components. But here's an example of that first uh, config that I showed you. 
but we've broken it up with modules into three distinct areas, uh, metrics, logs, and traces. So instead of having all the config in one place, we've got additional config files that we're pointing to, um, one, one for each. Um, so that's how modules.string started. And then we got into the idea of, okay, well, it's kind of a bummer to have to do both of these. So what if we try to do, uh, I don't bring it up here. What if we just do it as module file and just bring the file stuff inside? So this this uh, module loader will work with files. We've we're also exploring things like uh, module git uh, conceptually. That's being considered, and you know other module ideas. Let us know. We're we're definitely trying to brainstorm what ones would be useful. So in this setup now, we've got one component for the module. And then you can see if we look at this particular one, module file metrics. And here I've got a metrics module. And that one defines the sources for the metrics as well as where we're going to write them to. But those sources are, in fact, within another layer of modules. So we've got those down layers. So this kind of shows the multi layer example. So let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to kick this off. So just to make sure I understand. Yeah, go um, ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Robert. Questions. So modules are configuration files, right? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and then module loaders find those configuration files and and run them, right? So yeah. it allows us to. Okay, I see. Yep. Exactly. So we're basically allowing. It sounds like we're allowing um, you to split up your configs and kind of reuse them. Oh, we got a question. If you want to uh, say it out loud or, or type it in chat, either one's fine. Uh, yeah, so I'm wondering, can we create, like, I can see that there's a node exporter module. Um, can we create our own, like, for, like, Redis or for other stuff that we want to add in? Or is this, or is this sort of, like, what already exists and we're sort of piecing it together? I'm trying to, I'm trying to understand how it works in terms of Grafon Agent. So are you thinking like in terms of creating new components entirely or using modules with uh, flow components that exist? Uh, a little bit of both. I'm trying to understand how we can use modules with flow components that exist. Yep. And if we are to create new components, is that as, as easy as it as just adding another file and writing a dot .river file that adds it in? So I'm just trying to, trying, trying to understand what's going on. Yeah, yeah. So, so for uh, so for new components, um, that's kind of built into the agent itself. So these are the currently supported components. Um, although I'm looking at the next release, so there might be uh, one or two that are additional. Um, but for creating a new component, that that would involve uh, writing software into the agent. However, for all the existing components, um, they can all be used with a module. So. I can be a little more precise here in terms of uh, this example of how this is working. So I, I if, think that the general yeah, way ahead, to Robert. think about it is like a, a module is the idea that you can take a set of components and encapsulate them as one thing. So you can have like a pipeline where um, you discover things on Kubernetes and scrape metrics from those things you discovered and then filter some things out. You can kind of combine those three different or those set of components into one module and then have other people just import that that module as a single unit. I think kind kind of like a like almost kind of like a Helm chart in, in a way. Does that does that answer your question? Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, yeah, makes sense. Yeah, and and to to look at kind of like a precise uh, example here or a specific example. So in this case, we're we're using a, a module export to access a component from within the module. The fact that this is uh, the hotel processor batch component is not really important in the sense that this could have been any flow component that we're that we're exporting. So if I go here, we can see that this module is exporting this hotel processor batch default input, um, which is which is defined down here. So that's where I say any any flow component would would be compatible with doing this. Um, you can also for you know do the same thing. Uh, with arguments, so that's the, to go the other direction to go 
to push data down into a module. We've got this, uh, for the metrics, we've got this Prometheus exporter Unix, and we're passing the targets of that into a module. So again, it doesn't have to, you know, it's not like just Prometheus exporter Unix is currently supported for modules. It's just any, any flow component. Um, and within the metrics, that argument is defined up here and the value of it is retrieved uh, in this way. And it's actually passed uh, as an argument to another module. So it kind of goes down, it goes, goes down a couple layers in this, in this example. Okay. Um, the last thing I got here for us is just the running example. So this has been running, although maybe for, we've been, I think I've, I think I've lost my logs. You, you need to increase the, the font size there too. Oh sorry. yeah, you got it. You got it. So this is just showing that the, the modules are, are pushing data up to, up to the Grafana cloud. Um, there I can start to see if we can't get the logs to go up, but either way, uh, so we've got, we've got the metrics definitely the traces and hopefully we can get some logs popped up here, but um, so this gets running and I'll show you the graph as well. So the graph looks a little different. We're still doing some work uh, on it. Let's refresh now that it's running. Should be running. There we go. Um, so now we can see that this module file, um, let's look at the traces one. So here are the, the components within the module. So instead of having all the, the components at, at the top level of our graph, they're, they're kind of pushed down to within the module. Um, and then you can, you can click through those. There's some work we need to do uh, for nested modules uh, to make that work nicely. But this is kind of the gist of, of what it looks like that's different than if it was not a module. So I think that covers it. So we, yeah, we've got some finishing touches to do and building more module loaders is, is kind of where we're at in the, the development cycle here for this, uh, for this feature. So. Thanks, Eric. I think it's really cool. Yeah. Um, what type of module loaders do you think you met, you mentioned module file and, and module Git. uh, what other types of module loaders do you think we might support? I know right now we've also got like S3 and I think just HTTP uh, components in flow already as a couple examples where you could pass those into module.string. So, you know, it's possible that those would become their own module loader types. So you wouldn't have to use that go between uh, component. Um, mm -hmm. You know, may, maybe other ones out there. It's, it, it kind of feels like the possibilities are endless. So it'll kind of depend on what people want and, and uh, request, I think, a little bit. Uh, cool. Uh, so then my other question is like, what types of things, like what subset of the overall pipeline do you imagine people are going to use modules for? Like, is it going to be like the end, an end to end pipeline or, 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 or what? Yeah, it's hard to say. I, I kind of like, like you saw, kind of breaking up my mo metrics logs and traces into different pieces for reusability. I, I could see having modules for each of the different components that kind of have a working example uh, for different components. Um, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not totally sure on that. What do you think, uh, Robert? I'm guessing you have some thoughts. Uh, I'm pretending I don't know anything about modules. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> I, okay, fine. I'll, I'll, I'll drop the act. Uh, I mean, I, I think end-to-end -end pipelines are probably not the best use case of modules, unless it's just for like you using it locally to split things up. Um, I think the more common thing, because the intent is that modules are reusable, right? I think it's going to be more common that they handle some subset of, of the pipeline, probably at least uh, like retrieval and, and processing, but not delivery. I think delivery is probably always going to be in the hands of um, like giving back to the user to to build something that's like truly reusable, like across the board. Or hey, you have a question? Yeah, I was mostly curious about <clears throat> how modules are validated and uh, evaluated. So I, I was thinking we have module loaders. What happens if the module that you're loading is invalid for some reason? And does it affect the entire agent or are they run independently? 
it is running independent flow controllers, but right now a failed module load will uh, stop the agent from from starting up. Just uh, similar, I guess, to if you had a bad portion of config in your river file today, it wouldn't start up. So I think I think it kind of mirrors that for the moment. But there's definitely been some conversations about that. Um, uh, we have a question about what is the difference between config files for Grafana agent and the modules. So I'm I'm wondering if this is kind of uh, if you're familiar with this what we're referring to as static mode with the YAMLs. Uh, so this is kind of specific to the the river configs for the flow mode of agent, and it's I guess fully compatible with the the flow mode. Yeah, this is a, a flow mode uh, exclusive feature. We're putting right. most of our efforts into flow mode right now. We, we think it's the future of the agent where we can unlock all these you know, new use cases. I, I want to go back to Hurori's discussion real quick. Um, that is tr So on the initial load of, of the agent, of flow, um, all components must be healthy. But after that initial load, or they must succeed to unloading, but after the initial load, um, things can fail. So if you start out with a healthy agent, but then your module has a bug in it. Um, the module loader will, will continue like any other component in its last valid state. So you don't get like a, um, a propagating failure in that specific case. You just have to make sure that the, the initial load is error free. And then at that point, you kind of get like you go back to the, the normal health behavior. Cool, thanks. Thanks, Eric. Any other questions for Eric and, and modules? All right, last but not least, Pascalis is going to talk to us about what we're doing for horizontally scalable metrics collection in Flow. Pascalis, all yours. That sounded interesting. Let's see. First of all, I wanted to call out quickly uh, our design in the open philosophy that Eric showed here. We want the community to see what we're working on and um, have the community also take part. So yeah, clustering, uh, can, you, can everybody see my screen? Yeah, we can see it. Okay, great. So clustering in Grafana agent. Uh, we're looking for building a new solution for horizontally scaling metrics collection by making use of uh, the dynamic nature of uh, Grafana agent flow. And uh, of course, much of this is based on previous work. There were proposals of implementing this behavior in static mode early on, but we never got through to it. And the context is that we routinely run the agents with tens of millions in active metric series without hiccups. And uh, our user recommendation is that uh, we start thinking about horizontal scaling around the 2 million active series mark to avoid any surprises if cardinality if the cardinality explodes. Uh, but the current implementations are not really applicable to flow. They have various drawbacks, like hash mode sharding is not dynamics and uh, is mostly for static clusters when, where it's not very often that new members join in or uh, leave the cluster. The scraping service has an external set of dependencies that uh, force you into a specific thing, and host filtering ties you to a daemon site like deployment, so they all um, are not super applicable to what we're doing right now. So our goal is to build a flow native clustering mode that can elastically scale the agent by making use of a single configuration file. And to do that, uh, we'll make use of the Gaussian protocol. It's what also Mimir and Locke are using for the distributed deployments. So we have some operational experience around it, and we think it can be a good fit. Uh, for anybody not familiar with uh, what the gossip protocol is and how it works, you can see it in action here. Imagine you have this 20 cluster node with a fan node uh, factor of two. That means that each node can send uh, a message to two of its neighbors. And if we start with this top node that receives one new piece of information, we can see where it might um, send this information to its neighbors. And by sending the message, this information is propagated. Uh, in, the next, in the next cycle, uh, each of the nodes that has this new information propagates it to two more of its neighbors, and so on and so on, until the cluster uh, converges to the eventually consistent state of every node knowing exactly uh, how the cluster should behave. Uh, this scales logarithmically on system size, um, and you can play around with uh, a cluster like this using this link to see the Gaussian protocol in practice. 
And as we mentioned, the eventually consistent state is when all nodes are working with the same configuration and have knowledge of everything in, uh, that exists uh, in their environment. Uh, what we also want to do is uh, clustering to, be to become the default behavior of the agent so that if you start an, a, an agent of size one, then uh, it's just a single node cluster and can easily like scale to two or more agents collaborating for metrics collection or fall back to the single node behavior. Each node has their own Sarder implementation that can assign token ownership. And there's already a few different Sarder implementations. It's with their own trade-offs and uh, best suited for specific use cases. But uh, the magic sauce here, the crucial part, is that in the eventually consistent state, each node can perform the sharding and independently arrive at the same result. So for a specific hash value of X, all nodes will agree which certain peer is responsible for it. And in case of cluster changes, only one over N of these tokens will be to be redistributed. Uh, so for starters, we have identified two use cases that we would like to start working towards in sequence. First off, target distribution. So if all the agents in a cluster have the same configuration file and can discover the same set of targets, then we can use this distributed sharding to make each node only scrape the targets which is under their own ownership. The second use case that we would like to enable later on is to have fine-grained scheduling. So for components that don't make sense to run in all the nodes, for example, you have a 10-node cluster, we don't want to run 10 instances of a MySQL exporter, for example, we can only have one or two for high availability. Then we can make uh, this distributed um, system decide which uh, node should have ownership of that uh, component so it gets good for scheduling. Uh, so here's how it works right now, for example. We can have a Prometheus.scrape component that uh, has to scrape these four targets. And it also has an argument that says nodes update equals true. So every time the cluster state changes, either a new member joins the cluster or a member leaves the cluster because it was unhealthy or whatever, it will call an update method on this, uh, the update method of this component. So it will redistribute the targets. I'm sorry I can't make the font size any larger than that right now. I hope it's readable. So initially, we can see that the node is responsible for five targets here because it's a, a one-node cluster. But when a new peer joins in, we can see that it's only responsible for four of them since the new node is responsible, takes ownership of one of those. Same happens for uh, when a new, um, um, a new node joins. Our node that we're tracking here has a responsibility for even less of the targets. But when it leaves, it takes a responsibility of one more. And when another joins, it may have a responsibility of more, as it's not like a, an exact uh, match, but it's based on the hash values, which uh, will balance out in the long term and not uh, just for small numbers. Go ahead, Robert. Um, so I, I kind of have like two, two parts of a question. Uh, yep. Part one is how even do we expect the distribution to be amongst uh, all the agents in the cluster? Uh, what What do you mean? Uh, how do ex we expect the distribution to be? Yeah, like like how good is the distribution? Um... Uh, it uses a consistent hashing approach, and depending on the um, starter implementation that you choose, you can have like better distribution, but um, with uh, a more CPU intensive. Um, a sharding mechanism, so you will spend more cycles deciding uh, who does what, or you can have a more efficient that is um, less uh, accurate. So that kind of, kind of like, rough, like roughly even distribution, like uh, may maybe yeah. if you had like 10 million targets, would you say, and, and like three, three agents, would you say that like the 10 million roughly divides evenly? Yeah, it, it okay. should like with a, with a lot of big numbers. Uh, then, the, if the hashes are even distributed, distributed, then each agent should have the same amount of targets assigned to it. Thank you. So, like the second now, second question. Um, today we use like hash margin sharding. That's typically how we recommend people to do things. Yeah. Um. What? Why would you want to stop using hash margin sharding and use this instead? I'm sorry if you already covered this. No, don't worry. I, I should have explained it better. So with Hasmod sharding, what we do is we has the address uh, label of any Prometheus target, and we uh, assign this um, 
to a value of zero to, a, to n minus one for an inside cluster. And then uh, each um, cluster node is assigned a set of addresses. The thing is that when um, a member leaves or joins the cluster, first we have to update the configuration of uh, one or more of these, um, uh, of these cluster members. And also uh, we have to rearrange the targets of uh, every uh, participant. So this means that uh, we lose efficiency as um, you may have to have cast things that will no longer be present uh, on this machine and um, your write ahead log may become slower and uh, that kind of thing. Whereas in this approach, uh, you typically only need to redistribute one over N of your um, targets and you don't have to recalculate everything for uh, all. So for a 10 node side cluster, you would have to uh, roughly redistribute 10% of the targets. I'm not sure if it was a, the best explanation here, if you can uh, chime in. Um, uh, so, so it's kind of just like there's less work to do, right? Like with, yeah, with clustering, yeah. okay. It, sure. This was better in, in, more, in less words, yeah. Uh, Matt Durham? Uh, yes, is there a plan to have RFC on this? Uh, we have an RFC in a PR. Um, I hope that it makes sense without having knowledge of prior art. But uh, if it doesn't, then let me know and uh, I will um, work on it uh, to, to make it clearer. But yeah, there is an RFC as a draft PR in our uh, agent repo. Do I move on? Go for it. Thanks, my house. Okay. Yep. So uh, there are some failure modes, of course, uh, like networking failures, where a node may lose connection to other peers, but can still discover and scrape things and think that it's a, a known, its own cluster overloading itself. Uh, during cluster changes, uh, and um, as long as the cluster is not in the eventual consistent state, some targets may be scraped twice or not at all. But if the cluster state converges on a similar time frame to the scrape interval for um, these uh, pool-based models, then it should be okay, and we won't uh, have uh, lost metrics. And uh, our eventually consistent state and this design that we uh, established only works for agents running the same configuration. So in case of um, a rollout of a new configuration, we still have to make sure that uh, the loading of all the flow components also happens in a similar, smaller time frame than um, the metric collection interval. And the roadmap is to make this work as a horizontal pod auto scaler uh, in a Kubernetes environment to see it in action. Uh, these kind of systems are hard to debug typically, so we want to make uh, it some first class debugging so that people can actually understand what's going on in the agents and debug issues. We hope the flow UI can be of help here. And also offer some opinionated ways to monitor and alert in these clusters. There's already some metrics like to have the config hashes and see which config files were loaded and how much time it took, but uh, there's still work to do. And the plan is to have something usable this quarter. Uh, so stay tuned for news and hopefully we'll have something good for you to use. Yeah, that was all for me. Thanks. What 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 is this quarter? <laughs> what mean? Oh yeah. Uh, by the next agent release, if I'm being optimistic, which is uh, around the end of April. Uh, but um, yeah, I'm not um, putting a promise on that right now. Okay. All right. Legally legally binding. It's now now. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Pascal. Uh, any questions for Pascal about uh, clustering or you know anything along those lines? All right, so uh, last up, uh, actually, sorry. So on our agenda, we, we had like a, a plan to talk about um, proposals. But before we do that, is there any questions that anyone has that, like in general that they want, they want us to talk about before we move on? I'll give about 30 seconds for someone to say yes or no. Less than 30 seconds. All right, we're moving on. So uh, for context, we've been doing a lot of work on Flow, as you can tell from maybe from this call. Um, and there's a lot of ideas coming in, uh, but that kind of means we have a huge backlog of issues of like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if we did this? So what we thought would be a good idea is explore a new thing where at the end of the community call, we all together 
kind of look through some of the proposals that we have for Flow and figure out, do they still make sense? Do we want to do this? Do we want to close it? Um, I handpicked some, which will probably be interesting to talk about. And <laughs> we'll see how this goes. We, we might not do this again if it's just boring. But uh, let me share my screen and show the first one I have selected up. I'm going from oldest to newest here. So back in September, this is like right after Flow is like re initially released, probably. Uh, I suggested, hey, what about a, a component which can run a binary on your system and uh, return the output to other Flow components? Um, there's the initial, there there's the obvious, like, oh no, that sounds insecure, right? Like, there's that concern. Um, but I, I kind of just want to, you know, <laughs> start with that context open up the floor and see what people think, if they think this is useful, if they think this is a horrible idea. Uh, right now it's in the unplanned milestone, so it's kind of at risk, I think, of just being closed as like a, yeah, we're, we're not feeling cool with this one. Go ahead, Matt. Yeah, I mean, there's obviously the scary part, but I think, um, you know, long-term with um, modules, we have the plan to introduce like, for lack of a better term, security levels, um, you know, like network access or file system access. So if we plug those to the main module and have that has like maybe be default off, I think this becomes a lot more reasonable. Okay. And I like I, I, you, you do like it? I like it with guide rails. That, that's the caveat. Okay. Uh, off by default, maybe. <laughs> But available okay. if you want to use it. So um, I will say, like the the initial use case that I had identified for this was I wanted to run um, like some components to talk to Kubernetes, but I needed to use like a Kubernetes authentication helper to even do that. So here I'm showing like like DigitalOcean uh, CTL to get uh, the credentials for Kubernetes cluster, in, in, like and expose that as a secret to components. Um, but I'm wondering if, like, if anyone's looking at this and they can think to themselves, "Oh, I can imagine where, like, in one way, this might be helpful outside of the credential helper idea, because th that might help influence whether or not this makes sense." Generating modules on the fly to a template. Okay, that's interesting. Any other ideas? Any other concerns or questions? Do we, do we want to vote <laughs> to see what we do with this? Just figuring this as I go. I, I think, should, okay, here, here's the vote. Here's the thing to vote on. Should we do anything about this right now? Or should we leave it and revisit later? And by do anything, I mean close or, you know, you know, something. I'm pro letting it ride, not deleting it, but not moving forward with it until we get more info. Is anyone shaking in their boots and they're like, please close this now? I don't know that it's closing now, but I but I wonder if the specific use cases like the one Matt just laid out, um, if solving them using something this generic may not be the answer ever. You know what I mean? Like you you would, you know, it's a great suggestion, but would you solve it? You know, a different a different way so you weren't opening yourself up too much. That's all. Yeah, like you could do the templating thing via like a HTTP server and then have that render you know a, a flow module out. That could be another way of doing that. So right. good to so let it ride it, or close, I guess. That'd be my vote. Yeah, I mean, it, it sounds like, I mean, we're not doing a very official vote right now, but it, it does sound like um, no one's terrified, but also we really haven't identified a, a strong need for this. Um, so for, for now, I'll say we can let it ride, but it's seeming like this doesn't have a very positive future in, in, in sight here. It, it, it probably won't make it. All right, I'm next thinking, up. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, yep, no, no, go I'm, ahead. I'm thinking this makes many things that are not possible today. Like you can at least hack around it, right? I'm thinking you have a very custom way of decrypting a secret mm -hmm. in your file system or, you know, I mean, you can do plenty of things with this. It's mostly around, you know, thinking about the security model as, you know, I like the idea of having like this, uh, different levels of security and maybe off by default, but I like the idea of having, you know, everything should be like common things should be easy and everything should be possible. And that kind of 
enters into the, we can make it possible if you know what you're doing and, and you know, we can make it secure enough. So yeah, mixed feelings again, but definitely interesting to talk about. I think one of the things that I'm kind of curious about is the security model here, right? Because technically there's already a component to read files from the local file system. And you could use Prometheus remote write with a like malicious server, not, not to give the people attack vector ideas on, on, on our YouTube recording, <laughs> but like you could, you could technically use local file and Prometheus remote write to send any file you want to any server. And you have to make sure when you're running flow that like you trust where you're sending things. So I, I think where I'm trying to get at here is does the ability to execute a program open up any new attack vectors that aren't already kind of possible with the ability to read files that the agent has access to? Pascal? I'd say yes. I'd say yes, because the attack vector is not just uh, sending sensitive information to the outside world, but maybe actually doing something in the same system. But yeah. Yeah, you, you could you could run like a remove root file system thing here. Yeah, that's true. That that would be bad. I mean, you Good can point. run anything. You can run a you can run a command to install something from the internet, and then I don't know. You can do all kinds of stuff with that, right? I mean, yep. Pascal, you had another have, idea. Yeah, we have a module that can clear your disk space and. Uh... Uh, yeah, we, we have a module that installs antivirus software for you, and then it then also installs virus. Uh, yeah, okay. I, I mean, this. There, it, I mean, I didn't think about those two use cases, uh, but uh, yeah, I think I'm I'm on the fence that this is a huge security risk. And if we did introduce it, you would probably want to be very cautious, right? Like you you'd want to make sure that you're loading modules that don't have this capability. That like only like the main config file is is doing this, and that you have like tight control over the config file, and making sure that the command and arguments here aren't coming from other components. Like you have to be able to like super 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 be sure about what it's doing, and maybe for that reason alone, uh, un unless we had a bunch of use cases that were pressing, we probably don't want to do this. Um. I kind of want to close it now, but maybe, maybe maybe let's just let it ride and then you know we'll revisit later. But it it does sound like this probably it would introduce more problems than it solves. Moving on to the next one, uh, Scott, this is actually your your proposal here. Do you want to talk about this? Do you remember what this is? Yeah, yeah. So um, somebody had asked whether we could uh, set um, a tenant ID on metrics, like uh, we have uh, the ability to do with um, a locky dot process component in the tenant stage, or how Promptail does it. But for metrics, this is not possible. Um, one uh, possible solution would be to use a new component that works like Cortex tenant that splits uh, the right ahead log into n right ahead logs and uh, can uh, add the Xcope org ID on the outgoing requests. Um, we actually went through different ideas on how this could be achieved from um, less um, like invasive to more invasive. And this currently fell in a limbo, like uh, there were some ideas, but we weren't sure which uh, one to proceed with. I still think that this can be useful for people. But I'm not sure whether we have a consensus in the way that we want to achieve this and whether the performance trade-off is um, is not that bad for people to actually use it and um, get something out of it. Like, what would... Um... So j just to make sure I understand, like, if we had yeah. some concept of routing, where we can yeah. take a metric stream and then route it selectively to remote write component A or remote write component B, and then those yeah. components handle t like multi tenancy. Would that be enough to solve this problem, or or is that kind of like only half baked? If the routing was smart enough to be able to act on the labels that uh, are through are are present in a metric, then yes. Yeah, so I, I, I guess it that... wouldn't it, it wouldn't solve the case where it's like you want a label to be to be injected as the header, right? Like that's that's where the routing would fall short. 
Um, well, if you could read uh, a label and draw out based on that, then you could have it uh, as a um, be forwarded to a relabel component and then to a different remote right that specifically has this header on it. So oh, I think maybe sorry, I, I mean, would... if 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 the set of tenants is unbounded and you don't know ahead of time which tenants exist, yeah, then then routing wouldn't solve that problem. Exactly. Yeah. In that case, no, it wouldn't. Okay. Yeah, I mean, this is. I would like this because I mean, this is something that comes up a lot. Loki uh, prompt tell us something for this. I mean, the, sorry, Loki components do too, uh, where you can use uh, a label to inject the the header to write to, um, but Prometheus can't do that. So I think, I think this really comes to like a uh, contribute to Prometheus upstream uh, kind of thing. Go ahead. Yeah. So, so, so you think you we should work with upstream and make uh, make this um, like an upstream feature? I mean, I would like routing, but I would also yeah. I also think of, I also think uh, for the unbounded case, yeah. we should also work with upstream for that capability too, where you can have uh, a label map to an like an auth header. Okay. Yeah, I see. So, uh, like for this specific proposal. I would like, I will uh, just post a comment later on. I would like to see us uh, have a new component um, with a disclaimer that uh, like having N different uh, tenants will uh, make the right head log be N times as large and people can see whether they want this other head on their systems or not. People do use Cortex tenant, even uh, though it has the same pitfalls, but it's it works for them, it's all their use case. Mm. Any other questions or ideas or things to talk about with this one? All right. Well, uh, with four minutes left of the call, I don't think it makes sense to, to do another one of these. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining. I think this is where I would normally pander to the, to the YouTube audience, like like, comment, subscribe, all those things. Uh, it probably helps out. I don't know. It's, I, don't, I don't run the Grafana channel. But uh, we do these monthly. Uh, they're posted to YouTube. We do them live too. So if you're interested in joining these live next time, uh, join the Grafana Slack and go to the agent channel where we'll let you know when we're doing another one. But yeah, thanks. Uh, I'll see everyone next time. See you, everybody. Have a great day. Oh, we have. Oh, guys, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I have a question I already asked in uh, agent uh, channel. Yeah. And uh, so uh, my situation is uh, I want to replace. Uh, our Q Prometheus stack with uh, Grafana agent. Yeah. But as I see, there is no option. So we wanted to save our huge amount of uh, Prometheus through CRDs. And also, we want to use service monitors. So uh, today, I tried to install Grafana agent via the um, Helm chart and the uh, operator. And uh, I, I see that uh, in case when I use operator, Operator allowed to use service uh, monitors, but uh, can't use um, Prometheus rules. Am I correct? Yeah. Do you have any plans to implement uh, to operator uh, using like you using of Prometheus rules, or any plans to add possibility to Grafana agent in flow mode to use uh, service monitors? Yeah. The, the latter one is definitely what the plan is. Um, I can't say a long, but I can answer this question at least. Uh, I think so. Right now, the strategy is we've recognized that a lot of people are struggling with the operator, um, and so we think that it generally makes more sense and it's easier for people to understand and, and for us to document and, and help people be successful with if we took what the operator does today and moved it all into flow. So. Um, I don't know what that means for the future of the operator, but it does mean that within the next soon, I, I can give you a timeline, but within the next some amount of time, we want the agent flow mode in flow mode to be able to support service monitors, pod monitors, and probes. And then today it already supports um, the alert alert manager rules and pod logs. And we'll probably continue adding support for more and more CRDs over time into flow mode. Okay, I got it. Thank you so much for answer. Rum. I, I got to go, but uh, Matt, Matt and Pascal is going to help answer other questions. <laughs> Bye. All right. Cool.
uh yeah is that enough yeah no thank thank you so much yes have a good day no worries catch you around man bye thanks yeah, bye